Well, I did not expect to be making a video so close to Christmas, but when the salt gods provide, I guess I have to do something. Plus, I'm sure you people want to hear my opinion on the Insomniac leaks. So before we begin talking about the PlayStation fanboys and then coping and seething over these leaks and trying to hide it or not really talk about it as much, I do believe there are some worthy things to talk about this leak, as it shows a really good insight into Sony's business strategy and how Insomniac approaches their future titles and games. It really is insightful to actually look at, and plus, us PC players were eating good. We got an entire Sony game two years early before any of the PlayStation guys did, you know, that must really hurt their feelings. But there is a positive to take away from this, as Insomniac could choose to take on some of the criticism that people give about the game in its early state, to improve the final product. But whether or not they actually take on that criticism is entirely up to them. But if they don't, and the game flops or just ends up becoming another Spider-Man 2 or some shitter fucking movie game, that's on them. But hey, that's what I would do in this situation. So the last two things I would like to mention is how Sony is going to do another price increase for their exclusive games, and now, apparently, are going to split Spider-Man 3 into three separate parts charging full price for each individual part. This is the first tweet that actually I saw about this situation and actually got me interested to look in about this, making you pay more for games, which it is true. If you go find the Reddit page where all the stuff is documented, it is true. So if you do have free time to go look at the Spider-Man 3 stuff and how they want to split it up into part one, part two, and MP, and also go look at the price increase for stuff, it's there. You can go look at it in your own time. I'm not going to share it here because that's a good way to get nuked. So, with all the context being given, it's finally time to look at some PlayStation fanboys, and we're gonna go talk about someone that I haven't had the chance to talk about yet, and that is Greg Miller. Hello everyone, it's me, Greg Miller from Kinda Funny Games, and if you didn't know, Insomniac was held ransom uh, by some ha uh, cyber hackers, the types, you know what I mean, uh, saying that they wanted $2 million or they'd release a whole bunch of Insomniac uh, files and they did that. Insomniac did not give them the money. They released, the hackers released the files. And now the internet is in flames as uh, all sorts of information about Wolverine, Insomniac, personal data of the developers, and so much more is floating around. Uh, this has led to a giant conversation about how this should be handled in reporting video game news. Uh, I wanted to come to you and talk to you about how we'll approach it on Kind of Funny Games Daily today. Uh, today, we will not go into the details of this leak. We will instead talk about the human component. Do I really need to say anything? Like, in what world would I even need to just give an explanation? I think this picture says more about you and how you actually treat these leaks, but oh no, since it's Insomniac, I'm not going to say anything negative or, you know, actually criticize. We're going to talk about that human component, man. I will never understand how most of you journalists refuse to talk about this situation. To me, I see it as an absolute benefit for Sony and Insomniac. As you know, at least you know what you're going to get in the future. And to me, most of these video game leaks aren't necessarily bad. They won't really hurt you that much. I mean, there probably is some damages involved, but to the individual employee, unless your data gets sold, then it's a bad thing. That was always the one thing that has always confused me with hacker groups. Like, why blackmail these individuals that work a 9 to 5 and, you know, slave away at some of the jobs? I mean, some of these game developers act like assholes on the internet, so maybe you could argue they deserve it for treating people like shit and thinking that they know better about stuff, but eh. I do think these hacker groups lose a lot of respect when you start doing shit like that. Unless these people have done actual bad things, then I couldn't really care. Just don't bother including them, don't sell their data, keep it to yourself. At the same time, though, this individual data could actually be worth a lot of money, depending on where you're placed in the company your position in that company, and how much leverage and weight you have. So, I don't know, it probably is worth a lot more than I would think it is. This tweet is from a guy by the name of Wolverine PS5. Xbox and PC fanboys are handing themselves a self-inflicted L. PlayStation first-party games are just too enticing. Where the fuck do half of you people keep getting this 5% complete Wolverine game? It's more than 5% complete. To me, it's like 60, 70, 80% complete, because if you're in an alpha state, You've done all the testing, you've done all the concept design. You're just finalizing the product before it goes gold. Mostly all design intentions are already done. For example, combat, gameplay, story is already finished. Even though I would argue that Wolverine's combat and some of its gameplay loops in that early build is not finished, but this is usually the part where they finalize and add most of the core features in the gameplay loop. So I find it really fucking stupid when you constantly say, this 5% of the game is doing better than anything 
like Starfield could do. Like, don't get me wrong, I think Starfield is a dog shit game. Do I believe Wolverine's gonna be better? I don't know, probably not, it could be, but I'll have to wait until I see the final products, because what I see right now, it's not really interesting. And finally, we're getting to one of the main people that I thought I would talk about, the Red Dragon. A playable build of Marvel's Wolverine has leaked can easily tell who has room temp IQ by seeing who downloads an unfinished game released by a ransomware group. So you're saying that people that are going out of their way to download and fix this alpha build to make it more playable for a lot more people are somehow room temp IQ. You know, understanding C++ and Python to make this a reality, I don't know, that must take a little bit more than room temp IQ to do. It's pretty ironic that someone that fanboys for a fucking plastic box is calling people room temp IQ for downloading an early build from a ransomware group. Like, I don't know, I think both of you are just as dumb as each other. The difference is, those people are actually contributing and making it work for more people, while you contribute nothing to society by fucking talking about a plastic box. But don't you worry, some of those people that have been downloading that game build have been saying some, I would say, pretty arguably stupid takes about games, which is, oh no, linear games suck for some reason, which I don't know why they would say that. I'm getting pretty sick and tired of every game becoming a budget open world game. But then again, everyone has their own taste and what they would desire from a game. Oh boy, it's unleashed. This could only be such a great take. Even an unfinished, 5% complete version of Wolverine is better than all the exclusive games on Xbox combined. Xbox would rather play that than Starfield. Facts hurt. Okay, let's just read that back. A 5% game is better than anything Xbox has ever done combined. Okay, let's just think about this right. He's saying that this game, supposedly a 5% complete Alpha build of a game is better than the entire Halo trilogy, the entire Gears of War trilogy, the entire Fable trilogy, not including any spin-off games of these franchises that may have been good or bad. What type of shitty logic is that? How can you say that? And expect to be taken seriously every day of your life. You fanboys have never learnt how to actually look at something and actually offer valid criticism. And then, for shits and giggles, he decided to add Starfield at the end, which, uh, I don't know, whichever one you subscribe to, whether or not it's a good or bad game or just middling, it's really up to you. But I think we can all agree that comparing a 5% complete game to fully finished products is fucking stupid. So now, this last tweet that we'll be taking a look at is, uh, it it's, it's truly bad. I I'll just let you listen to it. A tweet from Xbox Victim Support Group. Even hackers don't care to leak Xbox shit. We've literally gotten to the point where fanboys are now flexing the fact that their company that they support has been hacked. And people ask me often, why don't you ever cover Xbox fanboys as much as PlayStation? It's because the Xbox fanboys never come close to what the PlayStation fanboys will ever do. Look at this fucking guy's name. Xbox Victim Support Group. His, his entire, like, he hates Xbox, but he's branded his entire account about Xbox. And you defend Sony getting hacked? I know this isn't, like, uncommon for Sony to get hacked quite often. It's happened ever since PS2 from servers being shut down and people ransoming shit from them all the time. But using that as a flex to say, oh look, my console gets hacked more than yours, is fucking dumb. How can you say that with a straight face and think people aren't gonna laugh at you? Imagine your future generation seeing that. Imagine what they would think of you, how stupid you are. Like, I really do wonder what some of these families of these people, that fanboy and fucking Twitter all day, think of them. I mean, personally, I'd just see you as a waste of space. I think we, you should just be euthanized. There's no point keeping you around anymore. You're not going to contribute anything to society anyway. Well, that's it for the video. I hope you all enjoyed watching. I guess have a great Christmas. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.